Good evening and welcome. Uh, my name is Sandra Stevenson and I'm a governor of, of the OPC and a deputy director of photography at the Washington Post. And we are so excited to present another program in our series of How I Did It, pairing award-winning journalists and their editors. Tonight, we're talking with Marcus Yam, a staff a photographer and roving correspondent for the Los Angeles Times, and Calvin Hum, uh, the paper's executive director of photography. Marcus, as you may know, won a Pulitzer Prize in 2022 for his images documenting the US departure from Afghanistan. Just to give you the lay of the land for the evening, for those who have not participated um, in our session, we will talk for about a half an hour and then we'll take questions. Please put your questions in the chat and we'll try to get to all of them um, before the program ends at approximately 7 p.m. So let me give some bios. Calvin Hum, as I said, is the executive uh, director of photography at the Los Angeles Times starting in November of 2021. Um, he joined the Times in 1993 as a picture editor and has helped coach and guide countless photographers over the years. He has served as an editor, mentor, coach, and problem solver to the photo staff, making himself available all hours of the day and night and weekend to talk through professional challenges and assignments. I can totally relate to that. Um, he started his, his career as a staff photographer for UPI in Kansas City in 1983 and was a National Press Photographer Association Sports Photographer of the Year in 1985. While at the Times, he has received several awards and accolades. He was part of the photo staff that won the Angus McDougall Overall Excellence in Editing Award for newspapers in 2004 and 2005, and the best use of photography in the Pictures of the Year International Competition in 2005. In 2014, Calvin and Mary Clooney received a Lucy Award for, their, for Photo Editor of the Year. Marcus Yam is a roving Los Angeles Times foreign correspondent and staff photographer. Born and raised in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, he left his career in aerospace engineering to become a photographer. His goal uh, to take viewers to the front lines of conflict, struggle, and intimacy. His approach is deeply rooted in curiosity, dignity, and persistence. In 2022, uh, Marcus Yam won the Pulitzer Prize for breaking news photography for images documenting the US departure of Afghanistan that captured the human cost and historic change in the country. Yam is a two-time recipient of the Robert Kennedy Human Rights Journalism Award, notably in 2019 for his unflinching body of work showing everyday plight of Gazans during the deadly clashes in the Gaza Strip. He was also part of two Pulitzer Prize winning breaking news teams that covered the San Bernardino, California terrorist attack in 2015 for the Los Angeles Times and a deadly landslide in Oslo, Oslo Washington in uh, 2014 for the Seattle Times. His previous work has also earned him Emmy Awards for News Documentary, World Press Photo Award, Dart Award for Trauma Coverage, Scripps Howard Visual Journalism Award, Picture of the Year International Newspaper Photographer of the Year, Society of Professional Journalism, Journalists Sigma Delta Chi Award, National Headliner Award, and an Alfred I. DuPont Columbia University Award. When he's not working, Marcus loves minimizing and organizing his life for, for efficiency for emergencies. These are quite uh, hefty bios and very impressive. And um, I would like to say that I personally have worked with Marcus Yam in the very beginning of his career. And it's such a pleasure to see um, the intern who I worked with at the New York Times become the journalist that you are today. So kudos to you. And Calvin, kudos to you for, for growing and enriching um, a young photographer in our industry. So before we discuss how you made um, 
you know, the, the work that you did in Afghanistan. I think one of the, th the curious things that, uh, you know, is in the industry is it would be great if we could talk about how you became a visual correspondent. Um, what was the conversation like and how did you arrive to that career change? Who shall I toss it to first? Let's start with Marcus. Marcus. Uh... Okay. okay. Uh, in early 2020, um, I, I felt like I was just starting to hit the, the glass sort of like the glass ceiling at my job. And I was wanting to find a new challenge. I was starting to not feel challenged anymore. And I'm sure everybody has felt that way in their jobs. And I went to the executive editor at that point who was Norm Perlstein. And I asked him for advice, like, what should I do? How do I overcome this like plateau, I guess? And, and, and I guess he looked at my personnel file and basically saw that I, I, I make these occasional trips overseas once a year and do a big story, a big project. And he saw that I did well in them and excelled in them. And he, he actually, you know, uh, floated the idea of, you know, and kind of worked with me on the idea of like, well, what, what do you think about being a foreign correspondent? And I think when, that when he said that, my jaw just dropped to the floor and I was like, are, are you, are you serious? Because in our business, like, you know, these are, these opportunities are so rare for photographers at least. Um, and it almost never happens. I mean, maybe 30 years ago when the news business was flush with billions of dollars uh, and people flew for the first class maybe. Uh, and I just wasn't sure if it was a thing yet. And, and I think we, we did a trial run and I remember floating this idea back to Calvin and Calvin, I'll let you take it from here. And I remember what Calvin told me the entire time. Calvin wasn't, Calvin was my director of photography then and wasn't entirely like, you know, uh, entirely uh, sold on this idea. So this whole process took nine months. And so periodically Marcus would come to me for advice and I would say, well, I didn't really like the idea actually. And because he was our main guy, he was our, our main guy on every major events, whether it's a, a, a wildfire in Northern California, hurricane in Miami, uh, overseas and in Iraq, he was our main guy. So, so, and so for me to put him overseas, especially in a time in 2020 when COVID was happening, Black Lives Matter to Trump, the migrant migration. And you gotta remember the LA Times main focus is California and the West. And here's Marcus going off to, uh, well, he ended up temporarily in South Korea. It just didn't sit well with me. I'm like, well, I think it's great for you. I'm not so sure it was great for me. And it took me a while to actually come come around to it. And, and it turns out, uh, I hate to admit, but I was probably wrong on that. But uh... And so Marcus, while you were in South Korea, you know, how talk us through like, once you both decided this was the this was going to be your your new beat your new sort of career move like how did you prepare yourself i think the idea of being a correspondent has always been rooted in a, a, a like a, a drawing of geography a, a perimeter around a geography right be based somewhere cover the region around a little perimeter um but the pandemic changed that for us and forced us to reinvent this role uh, because staying in South Korea and being locked down and not being able to travel uh, was very, you, it didn't bode well for a trial run and almost it, it, it almost made this job untenable basically. Um, then I, you know, I, and I told Calvin, I was like, I, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm doing very well. I, I need to keep moving. I need to be productive. I don't want to sit somewhere and not do anything. Yeah, and I ju we just started hitting the road and, and going to all the places without any coronavirus restrict travel restrictions, um, and and it so happened that it, it's it's it took us to some of the roughest places uh, with the toughest assignments, and and ever since then I I I started going from assignment to assignment to assignment, and hence hence why we just gave up on you know at that point that the the domicile the idea the idea of staying put in one place i guess and and it changed that and and it it's kind of set stone set in place 
the idea that we needed to to be to show that to prove the the, the value of this role we needed to show that we are productive and we can and work on things continuously and pitch ideas nonstop. So I think we we tried to do that, um, and and we we made you know ever since I hit the road I was, you know, I made separate three separate trips to Afghanistan, basically, you know, and and built the foundations for you know the fall of 2021 basically.